What is up guys? Welcome back to another Shamshir Sound video. Hope you guys are doing fabulous today. Today we're going to be looking at Nicky Romero's Kickstart 2 again. We're going to break down four different ways you can use this plugin. The classic sync mode, sync with sidechain routing for visual feedback, also external audio to trigger the sidechain, and finally the MIDI mode. So we'll go over those four modes. If you guys are enjoying these quick videos, remember to smash up the like button and let's just jump right into it. So first, we have no sidechain, just as an example. We're using 3X Oscillator. You guys can download the FLP in the video description. A little kick above here. Here's with no sidechain. So of course, nothing is happening. The second one we have is the classic uh, sidechain sync. So when we bring that up, we can see here. So most of you guys, this is my go-to. Most of you guys are probably using this. Now with this, when you want the sidechain to get out of the way, you would have to automate this, the mix, or automate it on the mixer level, which is another way you can get away with uh, getting the sidechain to stop when the kick stops. But if you want smarter approaches, if you want less automation, let's look at the next mode. So the first mode, of course, sync, one over four, the defaults, playing around with the waveform. Let's go ahead and look at number two. So this mode here is the same thing, but what we have is we have the same thing going on, but we also have sidechain routing. So kick right now is being routed to send for sidechain sync SC. And that's done by just right clicking and you can click sidechain to this track. So it doesn't send the whole audio, just the sidechain uh, information. And what this is doing is that it's just like this one, but here we're also getting visual feedback. Make sure that you go into the settings, you go into the uh, wrapper settings and you turn on in processing sidechain. By default, it's off. So turn it on and make sure you're receiving the signal from kick. So this is the exact same as just what we played, but you will get visual feedback. Let's take a look. Audio wise, how this sounds and operates is the same, but you get visual feedback inside of Kickstart 2, which could be useful for you if you wanna kind of shape around the kick, listening with your ears, but also what you're seeing there. Now let's look at number three. This one is one of my favorites. With number three, this is sidechain audio external. So with audio external, same thing, we have the kick uh, sidechained to number five. Let's go ahead and bring it up. But the difference here is instead of sync, we've selected audio. Now the beauty of this is that when the kick stops, the sidechain stops. And this is great when you guys have kick patterns that aren't like the four on the floor. Maybe you're doing like a Henry Fong, um, playing around with the kicks, different kind of unique patterns. Maybe you're doing hard style. You know, maybe you're doing, like I said, that Henry Fong, like boom, 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 boom. You're playing around like that breaking that four by four. Now again, in the settings, wrapper settings, make sure under processing that sidechain is on, make sure you're receiving the signal from the kick. And with audio selected, it does add a little bit of uh, a delay, a latency, 16 milliseconds. This is to ensure that it's smooth and this is to ensure there's no kind of click. Let's go ahead and listen to this example. So I love this one because now you don't have to worry about automating the mix level when you want the sidechain to stop. Rather, it's just listening to the kick as a trigger. Now, don't get it mixed up. It's not using the kick for the sidechain amount. It's still using the waveform that you desire. Here's an example. So it's using the kick to trigger, but it's still using the waveforms that are within here. So a great mode that you can use so that you can clean up the amount of automation that's going on and you don't have a project that has tons of clips. It's gonna be a cleaner project and that way you can focus on the groove of the kick. Last but not least, let's take a look at the MIDI mode. So the MIDI mode here, very similar. We went ahead and again, make sure you go in the settings, make sure you go into processing, Make sure sidechain is on. We're receiving kicks signal. And again, like I said, don't forget that step. You gotta do that before you do that, of course, of routing 
you know, right click and sidechain to that send. Make sure you're doing that as a first step. With those out of the way, we selected MIDI and this is gonna operate similarly, but rather than using the audio to trigger, it's gonna use a MIDI send. So let's play this back and I'll explain how to set up the MIDI. So you'll see at the end it stopped because there's no kick and it gives us that flexibility just like the previous one with the audio external sidechain. It still operates the same. So if we change this to sub bass chain, what's the benefit of this? In the manual, they do say that MIDI is the tightest way to make this sidechain, the fastest, kind of the fastest way to glue this. And in order to set this up, it's all the same as audio external, but if you notice, I have a pattern up here that says kick MIDI. So this is like a ghost send. Now you don't need to use a sample. I added the MIDI out so you guys can find that when you go ahead to add a channel. I added MIDI out. We have channel one, the ports. So the port two, it's sending out to port two. When we come back to kickstart, if I go to the settings, it's gonna be somewhere here, settings, input port two. So MIDI out is sending to two, kickstart is receiving from two. Now this could be five and five, it could be seven and seven, so they just have to be the same number. That's sending and receiving. With that out of the way, I can then come into here and decide whatever I wanna do. You know, if I wanna change up this pattern, if I want it four on the floor, and again, it's just a trigger, and it will just trigger kickstart to use its own envelopes. That way, if I wanna you know, change this to free punch, it'll go ahead and do that. So this is a great way that you guys can get creative and find what works for you. Uh, for me personally, because I like to just quickly create stuff, I'm often just using the sync because the side chain that I'm doing is not too complicated. But of course, if you're working with break B, if you're breaking that four on the floor, this can be really useful for you to speed up the efficiency of your workflow and just get the ball rolling. So let me know what you guys think about this. Overall, we discussed no side chain. We talked about classic side chain sync. We talked about the same thing, but also getting visual feedback from side chaining. We then talked about the audio external, which shows you the feedback visually, but also will trigger it and stop when the kick stops. Again, they're all triggering the waveforms in Kickstart 2. And finally, we're triggering with a MIDI send. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys are doing for sidechain. And if you guys are using this plugin or not, if you guys made it this far, thank you. Remember to smash up the like button. You guys can download the FLP in the video description. And that's it, guys. Hope you guys have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.